Hey, what is up mortals? It is Akira here, and before we get into today's video, there's something I'd like to say. I'd like to let you all know that we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time. So, if you're interested, go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Secondly, if you didn't know, only 25% of you guys are subscribed to us. So, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now, with that out of the way, Let's get into the video. Boruto's dad is one of the all-time greats as far as crossover anime and manga are concerned, netting approximately 250 million copies sold in the 15 years of its publication, with 72 volumes in total. To put that in perspective, Case Closed, otherwise known as Detective Conan, began serialization in 1994 and is currently ongoing. It has a whopping 98 volumes and has been going strong before Naruto was a twinkle in Kishimoto's eye. Yet to this day, Conan has only sold 230 million copies, which is my way of saying, maybe check out Case Closed. It's a really great manga. But the real point is, Naruto is an incredibly popular series with a less than stellar conclusion. Now that Naruto has been finished for over six years, I think we've gotten enough distance to say that Naruto Shippuden went in some, let's say, bull directions. The core mechanics allowed for fun and interesting fights against opponents that were strong but sensible. Zabuza was a Kakashi level threat, and our trio had just graduated from the academy. They have to work together flawlessly to hit this guy with a light breeze, but as the show slips into Shippuden, we start seeing powers so off the wall, you might mistake Naruto for One Piece at a few points. We've got String Man, Venus Flytrap Guy Had, Terrorist Bombers, oh, Shippuden was so wild, Sakura got a hype fight. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Sakura was useful. These were strange times. Shippuden introduced many new and interesting techniques, but none were as complicated, overpowered, or important as the topic of today's deep dive, the Rinnegan. The world of Naruto has always had a strong core theme of natural genius versus hard work. Can the untalented rise above their station and take on those who were born naturally gifted? It's part of what made Naruto special. The world of Naruto Shippuden, on the other hand, not so much. This is a series much more concerned with lineage and inheritance specifically between the Uzumaki and Uchiha clans. In the world of Naruto Shippuden, the Uchiha clan, Yuga clan, and Uzumaki clan are three of the strongest due to being direct offshoots of the Otsutsuki clan, the progenitors of Chakra, Ninjutsu, and the three major Dojutsu in the series. Dojutsu, or eye techniques, are abilities that are granted to ninja through the possession of special eyes. They may be abilities inherent to the eyes themselves, or techniques that can only be performed in tandem with the eyes. There have been many different eye types introduced, but there are three that stand above the rest. These are the so-called Great Jojutsu, the Byakugan, the Sharingan, and the focus of today's video, the Rinnegan. The Rinnegan may be one of the most complex techniques in all of Naruto. Its history and abilities take a good while to fully understand. The name itself, Rinnegan, comes from Rinne, which is Japanese for Samsara, a Buddhist concept for the continuous cycle of life, death, and rebirth and gan, meaning eye. The design of the eye comes from its link to samsara. The ripple pattern of the Rinnegan has six rings. Only one ring away from the seven necessary to summon Ariana Grande into battle. Each ring represents a different realm of rebirth and existence from Buddhist cosmology, and these realms are the inspiration for the Rinnegan's greatest power, the Six Paths Technique. But we'll get to that later. The history of the Rinnegan is completely wild for a series like Naruto, and has its start far before the events of the series proper. It all begins with Kaguya, an alien rabbit goddess who would set into motion the creation of the entire Naruto world. Basically, everything we see in Naruto ties back to her. She's easily the most important character in the series from an impact perspective. So naturally, her backstory was an anime-only filler arc. But never fear. If you'd like to know more about her, we've got you covered. Check out our Kaguya deep dive. For this video, it's important to know that Kaguya is the progenitor of all chakra and by extension, all dojutsu. She herself possessed the Byakugan and the Rinne Sharingan, an incredibly powerful dojutsu and clearly a mix of the Rinnegan and the Sharingan. When Kaguya's children, Hamura and Hagaromo, were born, her powers and chakra were split between them. Hamura received the Byakugan and later the Tenseigan while Hagaromo received the Sharingan and later the Rinnegan, becoming the better son and first to ever use the technique. Obviously, Kaguya didn't really have a favourite son. 
kind of hard to pick after they team up on you and seal you in the moon. Kids, am I right? Hagoromo would come to be known as the Sage of Six Paths for his mastery of the Rinnegan's many techniques. And I mean, many techniques. At its most basic, the Rinnegan grants the ability to see chakra much like the Byakugan. Users of the Rinnegan are also masters of chakra control and can easily utilize any of the five chakra nature transformations, allowing them to learn any jitsu with ease. There are also many techniques that would appear to be unique to the individual Rinnegan user. Madara's Limbo Clones, or Momoshiki's Weird Portal Gun Hands for example. The main meat of this dojitsu, and where most of its powers derive, is in the Six Paths technique. Strap in, because we're in for a ride. This technique was best demonstrated by Pain, the first Rinnegan user shown in the series. Of course, the main pain was, in reality, the corpse of Yahiko being controlled through these stylish piercings by his still-living best friend Nagato. But that's a whole other story. These six are each a vessel for one of Nagato's six paths. Each one has the abilities of the path after which they are named. There's also a seventh, outer path, which is the path through which the six paths technique is utilized. The idea is that there are six paths that can each be outsourced to six different bodies all under the control of one person. This person is the outer path. Simple, right? The six paths are as follows. The Deva path, the Ashura path, the Human path, the Animal path, the Preta path, and the Naraka path. Like I mentioned earlier, each path takes heavy influence from the Samsara, and each path has a whole host of crazy abilities and techniques. The Naraka path grants the ability to call upon the King of Hell, a being heavily influenced by Yama, ruler of the cycle of the afterlife. He is the judge of who goes where during reincarnation. The King of Hell in Naruto operates like a stand from Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. Once summoned, the Rinnegan user can grab anyone around them and ask them a question. Once the question is asked, their soul takes the form of a long tongue, that the King of Hell then grabs with his own tongue, which takes the form of an arm. And if the person answers the question dishonestly, the king will tear out the person's tongue and eat it. Naruto, ladies and gentlemen. All this talk of tongue eating might make the second ability of the Naraka path seem in bad taste. You see, if you're injured, you can climb right on into the mouth of the king of hell, and through the gentle caress of his giant transforming tongue, you are healed. It can store your soul and body completely separately for revival at a more convenient time, and even replace damaged clothing. The most powerful technique available to the Naraka Path user is that of the Rinne Tensei, a part of the super special 7th path because 6 just wasn't good enough. This technique allows the user to pull vast numbers of souls from the underworld and give them back. Why didn't he use this technique to bring Yahiko back? Shh. What if Rin came back? The Preta Path, based on the Preta Realm, also known as the Hungry Ghost Realm. This is where those who possess the greed-filled existence in life were sent to spend their reincarnation. The Preta are forever in need of food and drink, never able to eat or drink enough to satisfy their eternal hunger. The Preta Path adapts from its Buddhist roots by allowing the user to absorb an endless amount of chakra, making them effectively immune to ninjutsu of any kind. The user can also use the chakra absorbed through this technique to heal their own body. Before we get back into the dive, I would like to say that, in case you guys didn't know, we are a secondary channel to our main channel, We The Celestials. We The Celestials is full of fun what if stories. If you have the sugar tooth for great storytelling, please give that channel a visit as well. If you are interested in the content we share with all channels, make sure you click the icon on the top right corner or check the description below for a link to the channel. Now, with that out of the way, let's get back into the dive. The animal path is based on the plane of rebirth that animals who work under humans are reborn into. Oh, that's great! A cool place for all those helpful critters to wipe out after they die. Where do I sign- Uh, what's that? The animal realm is bad, actually? A hell world filled with lawless suffering? Nothing but fear and violence? Uh-huh. Well, that's disturbing. Come on, Mr. Fluffer McBuffbot. We're making you immortal. The Animal Path allows the user complete control of summoning jutsu, granting them access to immortal and overwhelmingly powerful summons. These include, but are not limited to, the Giant Centipede, the Giant Ox, Mr. Krabs, a rhino that wears pants, and the best boy, Ten Heads, means ten times the pets and nose boobs. Then we've got the Human Path. The Human Path grants the user the ability to read a person's mind by ripping out their soul. 
While normally this would be an unspeakably painful way to die, the technique works in tandem with the King of Hell's ability to store souls for later reading. He must have some sort of soul library in there. The Asherah path gives the user the ability to grow extra arms and faces, shoot missiles, rocket hands and feet, and give them a literal head cannon. These powers come from an interpretation of the Asherah realm, a plane filled with warring demons. The war aspect of this plane might be the inspiration for the heavy artillery. Ten Ten better take some notes. The user is able to take an Asherah life form, the famous three-faced, six-armed stance that has become synonymous with Asherah. Hinduism portrays Asherah as beings who spent their life pursuing power, which explains why this path is easily the most offensive. And last but certainly not least, we have the neo pa I mean Deva path. This one gives you graffiti manipulation. Because why not? With the Deva path, you can manipulate attractive and repulsive forces. These techniques are known as the strap in Shinra Tensei, or Heavenly Subjugation of the Omnipresent God, and the Bansho Tenin, or Heavenly Attraction of All Creation. We'll just call them the Big Pool and Super Push. Now, all of those techniques showed up around the Dragon Ball Z vacation of Naruto, so you know we aren't done until we see an ability more broken than any ever introduced in the series. Hey, remember when the biggest threat was like Thick Sword at Mask Boy or Michael Jackson? Anyway, Pain can trap you in the center of a planetoid made from the collective rubble of a city he just finished completely demolishing. So, uh, I guess that's the bar now. The Chibaku Tensei, or heavenly body bursting from the earth, is used by Madara to... Oh. Oh my. Naruto used to be so simple. The final path, the outer path is a path of supplementary techniques that allow for an individual with a Rinnegan to essentially act as manager of six other bodies. In Nagato's case, he was able to fight through his six vessels while existing as an outside entity, thus the outer path. The ability to control corpses through chakra earrings is an ability utilized by the seventh path. Linking these bodies through eyesight is also a seventh path ability. This is all before we get to Naruto GX over here. There, the Rinnegan comes in different colours. People have, like, three of them. It's madness, but that's the Rinnegan for you. Be sure to look out for the Rinnegan Part 2, all about the use of the Rinnegan in Boruto. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer for this video as well as the editors for this video. Their details will be in the description below. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video, and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and don't forget to super push that subscribe button if you're interested, and Bansho Tenin that like button to your cursor if you liked the video. Until next time, Peace out, mortals. Have an amazing day.